you can use your lifeline if you want. I'm just. Nah, of course, I'll, uh, you can lock the answer. I am, I, I am absolutely someone who is interested in these laws, and I, we even do this for fun uh, among ourselves. You know, when we're when we're sitting in the dressing room, or I'll use the lifeline. That's a little tricky, to be honest. I'm not really sure about the rule, but I'll try and guess it practically. Welcome, Jaydev. Uh, before we get on to the show, as I'm asking every player that's coming on this show, what is the weirdest or the most interesting thing that you have seen in the cricket field? Something to do with the laws of the game. Uh, yeah. Thank you. First of all, so I think if I if I just go back, um, maybe two three months, uh, uh, in one of our Ranji games, it happened that. Um, one of my team members got bowled. He got bowled, but uh, the bails didn't fall off. I think that has happened a lot of times, right? It has happened a lot of times. So that is one thing that that is really strange and disheartening, if I can say that as a bowler to me. You know, when you hit the stumps, but the bails just don't fall off. And in some some instances, I, I mean, the ball has literally deflected towards the slips. So in this instance, that I'm I'm saying. It has literally hit the stumps, deflected towards the slips, and still the bales just came off the stumps and then fell right in the place. So I think that's that's actually one of the strangest things that you you actually get out, but then you are not out in a way. Kamlesh Makwana, if I believe him, he got bowled. We were playing against Mumbai, and 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 then fortunately he got us home as well. You know, we she saved that game from going out outright and he was the one who saved us, saved it for us. So, it happens on the field, right? It happens. That's how strange uh, situations can be sometimes. Yes, absolutely. Good that you were on the good side of the loss that time. So, let's get straight into the questions. Ten questions. First yeah. one, the easy section. The first one, in the easy, first one in the easy section. So, you're a bowler. So, you should be knowing this. Mm-hmm. A batsman is getting ready to play a switch hit. Okay, okay. there is a situation. The bowler sees it. Say, for example, you are the bowler. You see it, and instead of bowling left hand like you always do, in your run up, you suddenly change to right hand and bowl a right arm, right hand fast ball. What will the umpire do? Will he A, allow it, or will he B, call it a no ball? He will call it a ball. That's absolutely right. So you're not allowed to change your hand in the middle of a run-up or even without informing the umpire. So without informing the umpires. You can do it in between the overs, I guess, but you have to inform the umpire and then the umpire informs the batsman. That's how you should do it. Yeah, yeah, that's allowed. In fact, a lot of uh, players are bowling uh, with both hands these days, but the thing is you have to inform the umpires. So yes. so good start. One uh, you're off the mark with a single. The second question, it's a similar one. So, a batsman is shuffling across in the crease. A bowler notices this and suddenly, instead of bowling over the wicket like he was bowling through that over, he suddenly switches to around the wicket. Once again, without informing the umpire. In this occasion, what will the umpire do? Option A, he will allow it. Option B, he will call it a no ball. He will again call it a no ball. That's also right. So the, the law also states that you should you should always inform the umpire before bowling uh, without, before changing even the mode of delivery in sense over the wicket or around the wicket, left hand or right hand. So two out of two. I was gonna clarify on I was gonna clarify on that point in the first question itself. Now, better that I didn't do it so that I got one more question right. <laughs> I know. Okay, good start. Two out of two. We're in the easy section yeah. still. Third question. Yeah. This one you might have to put yourself in the umpire's hat once again. Apart mm -hmm. from run out and a stumping, for which of the following forms of dismissals will the square leg umpire answer appeal to? Option A, hit wicket. Option B, obstructing the field. Option C, Caught behind. Option D, hit the ball twice. Uh, uh, I think it's hit wicket. 
again, right? Hitpicket falls directly under the square leg umpire. So these three forms of dismissal: stump, hitpicket, and run out. When the run out happens in the batsman's end, these three forms right. of dismissals will come under the purview of the square leg umpire. So well done, well done. Three out of three. Last one in the easy section. This is a question about ODI. Okay, so what is the upper limit for the number of fielders allowed on the leg side in an ODI match? Again, four options. Is it A three, B four, C five, or D? There is no limit. It's D. There is no limit. Are you sure? Uh, can you can you like pack all uh, all your fielders on the leg side in an ODI match? Is that allowed? So it's just leg side, then right? It's not. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think in ODI there is no limit because anyways there is a wide on the leg side, so there is no limit. Uh, you can use your lifeline if you want. I'm just. Nah, I'm sure. I'll, uh, you can lock the answer. Okay, then I'm I'm afraid to say it is wrong. In an ODI match, you can have only five fielders on the leg side at the instance of delivery. Okay, so that is that that okay. is in the that that is in the ICC laws. So anyway, okay. three out of four, three out of four. That's a good start for you. Probably, probably we have never got an instance where I have I have had more fielders on the leg side. So I've never. I've never experienced that on the field. That's yeah, why I yeah. That. yeah. Generally, it's very rare that you keep like nine, uh, more than five fielders on the leg side right. anyway. So, right. absolutely. In ODIs, it doesn't happen anyways, right? Because the negative bowling is is something that you do in a test match at mm. times when you want to stop runs because you don't really get wide. Nowadays, that has also changed. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, this is this doesn't happen of, often, but it's written in the laws. So. Right, obviously, it's a lot, so yes. Yeah, so anyway, uh, fifth question, first one in the medium section. Two fielders go for a catch along the boundary line. Mm -hmm. The ball is hit in the air, two fielders, straight, say long on and long off, they go for a catch along the boundary line. One fielder is inside the boundary line, but the other fielder goes out to avoid collision. Okay. The fielder, the fielder inside takes the catch. And as soon as he takes the catch, the fielder from the outside the boundary line, he taps the fielder to say congratulations, well done, like that. He's not helping the catch, but he's just congratulating him. Mm -hmm. Now the fielders appeal for a catch. What will the umpire do? So option A, the umpire gives six runs. Mm -hmm. Option B, the batsman is out caught. Option C, the umpire gives seven runs, basically six runs, plus he calls a no ball because the fielder went outside. Option D, 11 runs, six runs, plus five runs for penalty because the fielder outside touched the uh, fielder inside. Some options might be there just to confuse you. So I think that's out. The batsman is out caught. Absolutely right. So batsman is out caught. The rule the rule says that if the fielder if the fielder from the outside uh, has the intention of helping the fi uh, the other fielder to catch the ball, then yeah. it will be a not out. Next one, you're a bowler. You should get this right. So, sixth one, the batsman hits the ball straight. It hits okay. the stumps, and then the umpire's shoulder, and then goes to the mid-on fielder. The mid-on fielder takes the catch mm -hmm. and he appeals for a catch. What will the umpire decide? Will he A, option A, give it out, option B, he will give it not out, option C, he will give it not out and warn the fielding team for needless appealing? I, uh, I think there was a change in this rule recently if I am not I'm not wrong. Uh, so it hits the stumps, hits the umpire, hmm. and then the field catches it, right? That's the scenario. Yeah, it doesn't hit the ground. Hmm. <laughs> well, is it fair to use the lifeline in this? Because there is no point to use the lifeline, right? 
you can use a lifeline whenever you want hmm. so i'll take the lifeline and just give it a go okay is it a out or c not out and excessive appealing these are the two options yeah so it's out for sure out is right out for sure is right uh, yeah. even if it hits the stumps or the non striker batsman or any other fielder or even the umpire after if, yeah. if it doesn't hit the ground he's it's the out. Ball, he's out yeah so just the bit confused about the umpire coming into picture because i think that thing came into picture the one the shield that they use i think that came into picture recently i mm-hmm. guess yeah because they use the shield in the t20s but yeah so the that the players use so yeah. the question was if it hits the shield and then it then the fielder catches mm-hmm. one what yeah so interesting scenarios there but he still given out a fielder at the boundary fields the ball mm-hmm. and while throwing it back he accidentally throws it behind him and the ball directly falls into the crowd okay at the instance of the throw the batsman had completed two runs how okay. many runs will be awarded in total so option a two runs that is the runs that they ran hmm. option b four runs for the boundary option c six runs which is two runs plus the four over throws so these three options again i will go with option c two runs plus the over throws again right he gets uh, a, even even though it was unintentional it will still be counted as an overthrow so and they had already completed two runs at that instant so that's right well done you're going really well so far do you like all yeah. these weird uh, instances do you, are, are you someone who's interested yeah, in I, I am I, i am absolutely someone who is interested in these laws and i we even do this for fun uh, among ourselves you know when we when we are sitting in the dressing room or especially when uh during the games when we are when the team is batting or we are all sitting out so these are the scenarios that we kind of discuss and then uh, debate and come to conclusions and then find out what is right what is wrong who's the best in uh, the saurashtra team mm, i think prerak mankar mm. you know, uh he is 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 an upcoming all rounder he's pretty good he's he's really really good at records i think he probably knows uh you know every single game that is played on the planet at at, at a single time you know he'll know a game that is happening in australia he'll know that is happening in england and south africa and everywhere so someone who is is the statistics a lot the uh, eighth one we get going we're going into the tough section mm-hmm. you've got six out of seven so far and now it's again a bowler question you can take your time to think about this yeah eighth one in how many ways can a batsman be dismissed in a no ball option option a 1 option b 2 option c 3 option d 4 okay in a no ball you said yeah hmm so Okay I'll, I'll I'll use the lifeline. Okay lifeline I'll keep it to 3 or 4. Is it 3 forms of dismissals or 4 forms of dismissals? Hmm. Hmm. Still continuing. I will go with I go with 3. 3 is right. 3 is right. What are those 3? So I know uh, run out and obstructing the field I guess. Yes. Yes. And um but I'm not sure about the third one to be honest. I just knew this too. So I I I give myself that liberty of not knowing one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The third one is hit the ball twice. Ah, okay. 
Now, this is a batting question. Okay. It is a final over of a T20 match. Okay. A batsman hits it to the deep and he deliberately runs short in the first run. He deliberately runs short so that he can come back quickly and take strike. Right. What action should the umpire take? Hmm. Three options. Option hmm. A. No runs to the batting team and five hmm. runs penalty to the fielding team. Basically, five runs will be given to the fielding team. Right. That is option A. Option hmm. B is one run to the batting team and a hmm. warning for the batsman. Okay. Option C. He gives the batsman out for unfair play. Okay. So three options. These are three options. Yeah. Hmm. That's a little tricky to be honest. I'm not really sure about the rule, but I'll try and guess it practically. Hmm. Uh, so one run. One run and one run and uh, warning. You said, is it? One run and warning. Option. That is the second option. Yeah. The first option is no runs and five runs penalty. Five runs will be given to the fielding team. The third mm -hmm. option is batsman is given out. Right. Yeah. So I think uh, I think I'll go with the first option. No runs and and five runs penalty. Well, that that's also right. That is indeed right. I thought A and B would be a bit confusing. C was just an option to confuse, but was just an option, yeah. Yeah. So so how did you derive at it? I mean, you said that you would think about it logically and not although you were not sure about the law. So how did you guess this? Uh, well, I guess it. I guess it. It makes sense to to penalize the batsman for something. That is foul play, right? That is not in the spirit of the game. Mm -hmm. You are warned uh, only for a mistake, not really for a foul play. This is deliberate, and I think that that has to be penalized in the laws of the book. That's how I think. Spot on there, absolutely spot on. Your entire explanation was perfect as well. So it was an unfair play by the batsman, and the umpires penalize him. So well done. Well done. Eight out of nine. You've got an option to make it nine out of ten, and you have a lifeline left. So this one is again a bowling question, which okay. I think you sh but might be a little tricky. So let's see. An extremely fast bowler bowls a bouncer. Yeah. It flies over the batsman and the keeper and goes directly beyond the boundary without touching anything. Right. He's so fast. It's not a no ball or it is not a wide. Hmm. How many runs are given? Four options. Hmm. Option A is zero runs. The ball is called a dead ball. Option B is four runs. Option C is five runs, which is a penalty. Option D is six runs. Is it zero, four, five, or six? Mm -hmm. You get the scenario. This is, actually, this is actually a scenario that we have discussed in the past. But like I said, you know, between the games and used to discuss. But I don't really remember what was the right uh, conclusion. I have one lifeline, right? I'll go with that. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll I'll keep it to two options. Is it four runs or six runs? Yeah, it can be only. I'm sure you're gonna, we're gonna do that for sure this, for this question. Uh, they're obviously buys, right? Yeah, only buys. Like, just, I think, I think it's still four runs, four buys. I'll go with four. Spot on there, four buys. Uh, what, what's your explanation, though? Why is it not a six? Uh, it has it has bounced once on the wicket. I guess it's not a direct. Uh, it's not going directly over the over the field any which ways, and probably 
uh, I'm not sure if that's the right explanation, but I have something in mind which says that uh, that's the maximum you can give as as buys, maybe. That that's spot on. That's actually spot on. Uh, the fact that the ball did not hit the bat. Mm-hmm. So you cannot get a six if it doesn't hit the bat. Right, so, right, yeah. right. So that's that's actually something that was there on my mind. You, the maximum you get as an uh, as in buys or leg buys is is that if it Absolutely. doesn't hit the bat. Spot on there. You do not get a six unless it hits the bat. So it cannot be six runs. So very well done. Congratulations on nine out of ten, which is a great score. Thank you, thank you. I'm pretty happy actually. You know. Lot of things that we we did unknowingly did help me. Well, that's the power of domestic cricket, I'm guessing, because when I was talking to Parthiv yeah. Patel, he was saying that a lot of domestic players know all this in and out because they see so many scenarios day in and day out. Especially the domestic captain, someone like you who has just won uh, the Ranji Trophy. You want to challenge? You want to challenge someone? Anybody in your team or something? Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe there are there are a few. Maybe I can challenge uh, Cheteshwar if he's willing. If if Cheteshwar is willing, otherwise, you know, you know, uh, Prerak, If I would say that because I have named him previously as well. All right. So, all right. All Prerak right. or Dharmendra or Arpit Vasavada, whoever you have to like pick from from them in the all domestic. Right. All right, all right. Thanks a lot.